Welcome, I'm Katherine Martinez. This video is a continuation of Your Surrounded. Hopefully, you have had a chance to watch part one, which covered Create Outline in depth. We will be using Outline in this part two video, referencing the knowledge gained in part one, as well as comparing the two lasso tools that Perfect Embroidery Pro offers to us. Now, let's take a look at lasso. There are two of them. We have a lasso under our select key. If we click on the flyout, we see it there. We also can come down to stitch, click on the flyout, and we see another lasso. And of course, they give us different opportunities. The select lasso allows us to select an area of a design. It must have the desired area completely within the lassoed area. Let's play a bit. We'll come over here to library. We see up here our designs. I click on Perfect Embroidery Pro Free Designs. It's here in my display window. I'm going to do a right click, show contents, maximize that screen. If you need the refresher for the path where we are, you see it's C colon, dime, designs, Perfect Embroidery Pro Free Designs. We are looking for jam 13580. It happens to be right here on my screen, so I'll go ahead and double click to bring it to screen. Come back over into my sequence view, and I see all the pieces and parts of that jam. I'm going to come up and use my select lasso, click on that arrow, choose lasso, and let's lasso the pink area to delete it. I'm going to click and drag. The important thing is don't let go of your mouse until you have what you want. And then I'm going to go across the jar in my lasso and I see that it has selected that pink area at the bottom. I hit the delete key on my keyboard. A couple things have happened. It did delete the pink, which is what we were after. Notice it also took care of the label, both the background and the word. Remember that with our select lasso, anything that is within the lassoed area, completely within, is going to be deleted. We are left with a pink underlay, and perhaps we wonder why. Let's go ahead and select just that pink, and if I click and drag over, you see this area right here extended past my lassoed area, so it did not select this. This was not completely encased in the lassoed area. I'll go ahead and put that back, and if I select the other underlay and drag that over, you see we have a similar situation right in here, some that extended outside of the lassoed area. At this point, if we want that remaining pink to be gone, we simply can have it selected and delete it with our keyboard. We'll go ahead and put everything back the way it was. I will turn on our 3D. This time we'll do it again with our select lasso, but we are going to remove the orange lid. Once again, I click and drag, and again, the trick is not to let go of that mouse, come over and complete my lassoed area. It has selected the orange, I hit delete, and a couple things have happened. Actually, my orange is gone, but so is the fill that is in the bows and the ribbon part of the bows. Remember, it is going to delete everything within that selected area. These two were totally encased, the middle of the button, the ribbon, but the area of the actual streamers of the ribbon not encased in our lassoed area, so those are still present. You notice to the green, we might have thought that the green was also within our lassoed area, but if we select that, and actually I'm going to choose all of the green and drag over, you see that we have some running stitch down to the label area that was not in the lassoed area, so once again, that is not deleted. We'll do an undo and put everything back the way it was. Let's try another. We'll go back into our Perfect Embroidery Pro. I'll select that. The item that we want is the butterfly. Again, happens to be right here in front of us on screen, so we'll double click to bring that to screen. I will use my 3D and we'll come up here to select lasso again. 
choose that. We're going to try to remove the lower two wings. So I'll click and drag around what I think that area in there, let go, hit my delete key, and I see that I have gotten some, but not all, because I did not lasso this area right in here. Certainly we could select and delete those individual areas that are left. Something else to note, that none of the body of the butterfly was affected because when I went across with my lasso, I did not encase the entire body within that lassoed area. All right, we'll put it back because in this case, I might not want to use my select lasso. I might choose to use my other option, which is my stitch lasso. I'll click on the arrow and choose that lasso. And what I'm going to do here then is to click and drag. And accuracy is a little more important here because with this particular tool, everything that is within my lassoed area is going to be affected. So you can see all of the selections of all of those points. It's going to include even the bug. Now when I hit delete, I can see that yes indeed I have removed the bottom portion of that butterfly. So here we saw both of them. The select lasso selects a large area. Everything must be encased within that selection or my stitch lasso is going to select the stitches within the area. Does not care if it's a complete item or not. Let's take a look at a practical example of why we might want to use these lasso tools. Here in Erie, Pennsylvania, in February, I have been inside a lot due to the weather. So besides my normal work and play, writing articles for Dye Magazine and creating videos for Inspiration Software, I've begun playing with PEP to create embroidered jewelry. Take a look at these jacket jewelry buttons. Actually, if you're a longtime lover of Dime, you might remember seeing these buttons in the 2007 July-August volume 45. These pins are made using a two and a half inch half ball covered button. And what I've done is to create a template of the area that shows on top of the button and to add my design within that area. If we come back to PEP, we can see that I have this design already open and this design is artwork. I can come over here and see that it is. I do not want this to stitch. It's very similar to our spacer when we were doing our keychains. I've also created a document that has both the circle for the top representing what will actually show on the top of the button. That's the inner circle artwork. And then I've included an outside cut line. You can't just cut out a two and a half inch circle because you need extra fabric to wrap to the back of the button to secure on the teeth. So I've created this cut line over 3.3 quarter inch so I know how much fabric is needed for each button. And in this case, this particular circle is run because I do want that to stitch. Let's go back into our free designs from PEP. The design that I'd like to play with at this point is 41192. That search isolates it for me very easily. I bring it to screen and I'm going to now do a file merge. Merge my circle button that I know that represents the top of that button and I can see that this design fits perfectly. I would go ahead and make any changes that I wanted. Perhaps I want to change that blue color to maybe a red and whatever it is that I want to do if I want to change the other colors and so forth I can do that. Since this is a video for all levels I'm going to do a refresher. If this indeed was the pinwheel that I wanted I would come up and do a file, come down to save as. I need to pay attention where it's going so I would go ahead and click on a folder called my button jewelry Perhaps if I want to keep the pinwheel number, I can add to that and say button top or button. I am saving it as a C2S file in this first procedure. You want to do this. This allows me to create a native file or a working file that I can come back in anytime I want to and make changes to this design. 
to finish this process, if I really was ready to go ahead and stitch this out on my machine, I would go back under File, again do a Save As. I am still in my Button Jewelry folder. That name is correct, but I need to save it in the machine format that I have. I'll go ahead and save it as a 9 and click on Save, and that has saved my design in my machine format specifically to a baby lock machine. Let's repeat that process. I'll go back into our free designs. We have the search results still listed. I'll clear that search. The next one that I want to play with is this rose right down here, number 15289. I'll double click that to bring it to screen, turn on my 3D, do a file merge, bring in, I need to go up one level to bring in my button blank, and I can see this time around that the rows is too large. We do have the ability to size designs in PEP. PEP will recalculate the stitches. 20% up or down is a good rule to follow. With my rows selected, and actually I'm going to turn off my circle and select all of my rows, come up here and do a group, now I'll turn back on my circle, but I will select all of the rows, come up to my properties, transform, and I'm going to size it. I see that the current size is 2.54 width. That's the largest measurement. 20% of that is about a half inch. So I'll go ahead and make that measurement a two inch, apply it, and I see that that rose has fit nicely within that button top. Again, I would do my file save as as the C2S and repeat the procedure for my file save as PEZ format. Those two were easy and required very little adjusting to fit the button top. So let's do a little bit more of a challenge. We will go into our free designs once again. The Christmas bells are what I'm searching for. I see them right down here at the bottom of my screen. I'll bring them into my screen, do a file, merge, double click on my button blank, and I can see right away that the bells are too large for the top of my button. I think to start with, I am going to remove this bottom bell. So I'll turn on my 3D, that's how I like to work. And I could do this one of two ways. I could use my sequence view to remove these colors, and I can also use the select lasso and select the bell, making sure that I have the bell in my area of design, use my delete key, and I have removed that most of the portion. I have one color left. If I drag that over, I must have missed the top portion of that, but I'll go ahead and delete that, and I'm left with just the two bells that I want. Again, I will come over and select my circle. I'm going to hide that by clicking on the eyeball. Click and drag around all of my bells, group them, bring back my circle. It still doesn't fit. I'm going to click on the grouped bells, come into properties transform, choose the larger measurement and set that to a 2.25, apply it and center that group into my bells. If I'd like, I can select both items, come up here to my center line and then my bells fit uh, nicely, except I can see they're very close here to the end, so I might want to select that and move that up just a little bit, maybe not directly in the center of my button, but I now have made sure that the bells will fit on that button top. Again, I would go through my save procedures. We'll try another. I'll go into my free designs once again. I want the fern. I don't see it on my opening screen, so I'll go ahead and search 57723. This is the fern that I'd like. I'll bring it to screen. 3D is turned on. I'll do my file, merge, double click on my button top, and I can see that this design is quite large. The first thing I want to do is to select all of my design, and I'll come in to my size and I'm going to size the width to be a 2.4. 
I'll OK that, bring back my button, and see that that was a very good size for it to fit. However, there are times when I don't necessarily want the, the embroidery design to be exact center. Maybe I don't want to see all of it. I want it off center. So in this case, I'm going to do a shift and select all three items, bring those over, and drop those down just a little bit as if I don't want this fern to be centered exactly. I'm going to rotate and I can play for a little bit. I like this curlicue right here that I'm trying to get on the button top, but I'm going to remove this part of it and then this part of the stem. So at this point, I go back to using my tools. Do I want my select lasso? Probably not, because I only have three main colors here. What would be more beneficial is for me to use the stitch lasso. I am going to zoom in just a bit here on the screen. If I'm using that stitch lasso, I know that I have to be very accurate. I'll go ahead and click on that arrow, choose lasso, and I might do this in two parts. So I'll click and drag, and I'm being careful not to pick up anything that I don't want to remove, and I'll take care of that first. I have that area selected with all my stitches, and I delete, and I see that I have a sort of a cling on here, a jump stitch. I can even zoom in f further. And I can use just my stitch points and delete those individual stitch points. I can delete this one and that one. And here I'm just using my delete on my keyboard until those stitches are gone. If I need to scroll up at the top and see what I've left over here, do my manipulations. I have a point all the way at the top. And if I delete that one, and keep deleting, I see that I've taken care of that Klingon situation. I have one little point up here that's sticking out. This is very real. So let's go and once again get our stitch tool that allows us to work with the individual stitches. It's different than the point tool. And I can either right click and delete, or I could have deleted off the keyboard. These other stitches are going to be under the satin stitch, so I don't need to worry about those as much. But I do want to come over to my screen and set myself up so that I can do my lasso and remove these particular stitches. Again, I'm going to use the stitch lasso. I need to work with the individual stitches rather than the area. So I will start up here. I am going slowly around the parts that I want to keep. This black line is helping me realize the part of the button. I'm going to go straight across. And I come back up here, being careful at this tip, making sure that my lasso does take all of those points inside. I hit my Delete key. And I'm left with these stitches right here. I can choose to leave that square area because that's going to wrap to the back of the button. And I think rather than bringing this to a point, I'm just going to leave that square. So we'll go ahead and zoom back out. Once again, this area is going to be on the extended fabric that wraps to the back of the button. So I've used my lasso tool to help remove the parts that I don't want of this particular design. Come in to clean, go back into our library. This time, the design that I want to play with is from your monthly free designs. So I will click on the dime free designs, come down to February of 2017. You would have just received these at the beginning of this month. I'll scroll down until I find this cute little bunny and click and drag and drop her right in the middle of the screen. I'm going to come back to sequence view and I see that she's grouped. First thing I'm going to do is to ungroup it. And I'm going to get rid of the pieces and parts that I know that I don't want on my button. So I'll go ahead and do a file merge, bring that button circle in. This design is a lot larger than my button, but that's okay. We're going to start and take apart 
the design piece by piece. The first thing I want to do is to get rid of the words. I know that I don't need those. So I have selected on some of the words, which allows me over here in sequence view to isolate that color. I'll go ahead and delete the words. I'm left with the bunny and some pails. I'm going to now use my lasso select and draw around the pail. Delete that. I can see that I have some outlining that goes across the pail. I'm going to repeat that procedure with my select lasso. Take out this pail as well. And now I can move through the parts of the design piece by piece that will help me delete. So I'm going to select that part. It extends across the side. I'll go ahead and delete. Take out the gray portion of the bucket gray portion of this bucket and simply come back and delete and delete. Now at this point I am going to take my circle and position my bunny where I want her to be on this design. I move my button and I think I want her again off center and I don't really care whether or not I see the peas. They're cute and they certainly will add to the design, but I don't need to see all of them. And at this point, I now am going to use my stitch lasso. First though, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so I can be a bit more accurate. Remember, it's going to take away all of the stitches within the selected area. So I'll go ahead and choose my stitch lasso, come up here now, and come through here, getting close to my button line. I'm going slowly so that I can be somewhat accurate, coming up here around my feet and then come back here to finish the lasso and you can see that it is highlighting all of those stitch points that I have within my area and I'll delete them. All right, let's take a look now and I see I did a pretty good job. There's a couple that are left out here and we have our dress has changed to a different color other than pink. So what I'm going to do now is just take my regular select key, come over to my sequence view. Here is that dress, and I'm going to put it back to the pretty pink that it was. All right, I have a little bit of a foot. I can choose to leave that or not. I think it's kind of fun in this one. But I also see some other area that I might have issue with points. We have another tool right down here. It's called our stitch ends. If I turn that on, I can see any of those wayward stitch points that I don't want to happen. When I deleted those colors with the words and the buckets and all that other, I did not pick up everything. So at this point, I can now go back to my stitch lasso and lasso those points. I can come to individual points and select that and delete it with my keyboard. Again, I can select these points in here, delete individual points. If it's all by itself, I might just take it and delete just that individual one. Again, I can select those points and delete whatever way you like to use to delete those individual points. It's easier for you to do that. We can. I've got one little on up there and I think now we've done a very nice job of deleting the points that I no longer need in my design. So I'll go ahead and toggle off that stitch points. Here's my little bunny. I think she looks good. I'll go ahead and select her. I like this very much. I might do a file save as at this point if I wasn't sure where I wanted to go with it. However, depending on the fabric that I choose, this might be a little plain for my background. So let's now combine the other tool that we used earlier, our create outline, and do some fun things with this background. The first thing I'm going to do is select all of my bunny. So I'm scroll all the way down and hide my circle so that I can select all of my bunny, come up here and do a group. I'll turn my circle back on and with my bunny selected, I'm going to right click, create 
outline, set that distance to zero. Remember that will follow the outline of my bunny. And if I now come over here and show you, it has done the exact thing that I needed. We'll go ahead and click on undo to put that back. One of the things that I want to do is to deal with these outlines of the whiskers because they're not important for what we're going to do next. The trick is to hide our bunny. I'll zoom in just a little bit on our outline. This time go back to our shape tools and I will select those whisker points. Let me do a better job here of selecting those whisker points. Delete them. I don't need this one. I can delete that and I'll delete this one as well. Select these whisker points and delete and maybe delete some of these individual points. Again, what we're going to do next, I do not have to be as critical in my outline feature because you won't see it. I am going to smooth those out though so that they smooth out in the right way. We'll go ahead and zoom back out. There's the outline of my bunny. I also could remove these points, drag that point up just a little bit, remove these points. Again, not as critical for us in this outline. And I've adjusted the outline to what I'd like it to be. Let's bring back our bunny so that we see everything. If you notice these little bit of humps here up in the ears, not important. Because what we're going to do now, first of all, I need to ungroup my circle. It's really just the circle, but it comes in grouped when I did a merge. And I see that that is artwork. I do an expand for my bunny outline and I see that that is artwork. I'm going to select both of these and then come up to our combine. Remember we did this with the puffin. I'll click on combine. Now it makes this background all of one unit and I can do a right click convert to complex fill. I certainly don't like the black, so I'm going to put on a pretty color green. I don't want it to be a fill. If you see, that's kind of heavy on the front of my button. I'll come over to my standard, use the drop down. I want to come down to advanced stippling, use my drop down arrow, and I want a double oval. Apply that and I have a very nice soft background for my bunny and the top of my jacket jewelry button. All right, let's try another one. We're going to go back into our free designs for PEP. Remember the last search is still there. I'll go ahead and close that search. The design that I want this time is 85029. So I'll let that search find it for me. Bring it in as a double click. Let's zoom out just a little bit here and you can see that I have this kiss me I'm Irish this is a free design for you we'll go ahead and group all of that to start with bring in my file merge bring in my button top I know that that kiss me is too large so I'll come in to my transform and I'm going to size that to a two inch apply that fits within my design. I will do a right click, create outline, set the distance to zero and OK it. And look at what we have here. When I do that kind of outline, I really have a lot of ins and outs and too many small places for this to be appropriate. So let's remove that outline. Do my words once again. I'm going to right click, create outline, set that distance to a 0.1, then do an OK, and that is much better for our needs. All right, once again, I'm going to ungroup my circle, choose the artwork for the circle, choose the artwork for the outline, do a combine, right click, convert to complex fill. I'll go ahead and add a color. By clicking on my green button down here, I know I don't want it orange, so I'll go into the colors that are offered and choose my very soft green here. Right click that background. Again, I do not want that satin stitch in there. We'll come up and play a bit. I'm going to first choose contour. 
and apply it. This is sort of the look that I'm after. I have a lot of ins and outs for this particular one. So instead of contour, let me do an echo, apply that. And I think I like that better. I don't have as many of the actual ins and outs of that design. We see the difference here, and that's a very good example of why we just play, because you might like one better than the other. Let's take a look at these button steps. I've put some things together for you here to show, first of all, I would create four of these in a hoop for those things that I want to stitch on black. You see some of the ones that we played with there. Notice that I do have that cut line stitched. It is a run stitch, but the button top outline was artwork and it did not stitch. So we come here, we have trimmed very close to the cut line, and then you can see where I've wrapped that to the back of the button. There are those teeth on a covered button. With these that are so large, it doesn't come with a tool that you can use easily. So here's a trick I'll share with you. I've used it for years. You simply use the eraser on a pencil and use that to press down the fabric on those teeth. Those teeth are sharp and it does sort of save your thumbs and your fingers if you use a pencil. All right, knowing what we know about this cool tool outline, we can actually make any embroidery a standalone or a patch. Let's come up to a clean screen. We're going to bring up our ladybug. So once again, we'll go into our free designs, undo that search. The design that I want is ladybug 64428. You can find it that easily. I'll bring it to screen. And here is our ladybug. I am going to select all items and group them. Let's back this out just a little bit here so you can see what we're doing. We'll go ahead and right click, create that outline. I'm going to make this a 0.2. This is the largest measurement that we've used in the video. I'll go ahead and OK it. It is a little bit of a distance away from the ladybug, but I do that on purpose for where we're headed. I'll turn on our 3D. Our outline is still selected. And what I'm going to do first, you see it has a number of little humps and so forth here and there. I'm going to right click and use the Simplify tool. And when I use this, you'll see that it takes out some of the bumps in the line. I generally use it three times, just because I know that that's going to clean it up as nicely as it will. After that, there's not a whole lot of difference that you'll notice. I'll come over and turn on my Shape tool, and you can see that all of the points that are left are pretty nice. I don't have to do any more cleanup. All right, I'll select it right click it, convert to. I could convert it to be the run as I've done all along. If I wanted a raw edge applique, I would make it my bean stitch. But in this case, we're going to come down and create the applique. And here, that applique will allow it to be a standalone patch. I could come over to properties and do any of the changes that I'd like. I might not want that applique width to be 3.5. Maybe I just want it to be 3. Perhaps I want that density to be a 0.3. I know that I want to change the colors in that applique and apply. And you can see that's tightened it up just a little bit. The next step is to come over and make sure that this ladybug, the actual design itself, stitches in the order that would be logical to you. Once you've done this enough, you may or may not have to do this step, but let me show you that once I make sure the applique is the way that I want it to be, I'm going to do a right click and break up the path. What that allows me to do Please take a look over here at Sequence. I now have the applique position, I have the tack down stitch, and I have the final satin stitch. But that allows me to take the design itself and position it where it would logically go. For example, I have put it between the tack down stitch and the final satin stitch to allow the design to stitch, and then I would remove the hoop with everything still in it, trim around my tack down and put it back to complete the satin stitch. If I take a look at slow redraw, we see what we have that yes, there is the placement stitch, the tack down stitch, the design itself of the ladybug, 
and then at that point I would remove the hoop from the machine, trim around the outside tack down stitch, return it to the machine and complete the pretty satin stitch. All right, let's try one more. We're going to do another patch. We don't always do things for little boys here. So I'm going to go back into my free designs, take off the search, and in my search box, I'm looking for my little monster. 81212 is my number. I'll double click to bring him to screen. There he is. Let's back out just a little bit so you can see him. Turn on our 3D. And very simply, I'm going to select all of him, group, right click, create outline. Once again, use that point two as my distance. OK it. I now have my outline design. I'm going to right click simplify three times. That'll get rid of any uh, oddball points that may be in there. I could go in. If I want the bottom of this patch to be straight, I would select those points that I don't want, delete them, delete any others that are Klingons here, and give myself a straight bottom. I could make that any way that I wanted. Let's select it, right click, convert to applique, do my changes over here. I certainly want my change colors and apply. Um, perhaps I want my density to be a 0.3 and apply that. And here I have my frog patch as well. I would do the same thing again. Remember, if I expand it, this, this is applique. I would right click, break up path. That allows me to take the frog itself, the monster, position it where I want it in the order so that it would allow me the placement, the tag down, the design itself. I now can trim and then I would finish with my outline stitch. Let's take a look and see the actual steps for these patches. Here I have hooped water soluble sticky. I have placed my piece of fabric over that because this is sticky stabilizer. I then did my placement, my tack down and my design. It would be at this point that I would remove the hoop and you see that I have trimmed away the excess of the fabric and then put that hoop back on and it would finish with the satin stitch. One of the things that I've done as a trick, if I don't want to soak that entire patch, once I've trimmed the soluble very close to the satin stitch, I then soak a sponge and I really soak it. It's dripping just at the edge and then I run the edges of the patch on the sponge itself and that takes away any of the soluble stabilizer that might be left so that you have your cute patches when you're finished. Dime has a patch maker kit for you. It comes with the heavy duty water soluble that is perfect for standalone. It comes with patch attach which is a fusible permanent adhesive. It's a double sided adhesive that goes to the back of your patch and then allows you to adhere to your item. This particular kit does come with designs that are built in. You see we have 20 patch designs that come with a kit. So that makes it a little easier. Back in PEP, we're now going to use all of our tools on this next project and really we're upping the challenge factor as well. I have a document already begun. We'll go ahead and open it. Comes up on screen. I'll turn on my 3D and here on the left is the jewelry pendant that I have created. On the right is the design that I actually used to do so. So I wanted to show you the result and the beginning. This is a design by Creations by Kara. She is a longtime family member of the Dime Magazine advertisers. I did purchase this design so I can manipulate it as long as I don't try to sell the manipulated design as my own. We're going to start, first of all, I will select the purple portion of the final pendant. I'm going to do a copy, paste, drag that over, to where I would like it placed, keeping in mind the positioning of that design, knowing that I want pieces and parts. I might want it to come over just a little bit more to have less of the center. I can see that I used less of the center and had a little bit more 
of this flower and then also brought that down just a little bit so it looks similar to that this is very real instead of using my button top as we did with the previous designs I am using a shape that I created and again it did take me a while to play with the shape that I wanted and to perfect that and so forth but what we're doing here is using our lasso tools and how do we get this very large design a portion of it to fit in a shape that we have decided upon so here's my shape and it leaves me with those parts of the design that I do not want the first thing that that I'm going to do is select the pendant again and group that so I don't have to deal with accidentally getting any colors that I don't want. Then I'll come over to the Mindy design from Creations by Kara and I will come up and do an ungroup so that now I have access to all of the individual colors. I can see that this outside orange color is not going to be a part of the finished pendant at all. I come over to my sequence view and I select that portion of the design that I do not want, hit my delete key, and that is gone. And that helps me alleviate a good portion of that design. Now I see that I have areas that I can delete individually. What I'm going to do though, if I come back over to sequence view, going to do a little trick here and come up to my purple that is the second one that I have created I'll select that and I'm going to use the eyeball to hide it I can't see it I need it up there to know what parts of the design I'm going to delete so the other thing I'm going to do having hidden it is right click and ask it to fade the hidden and then hide that and now I can see a gray outline and I don't have to worry about deleting any of those stitches let's come in and use our zoom I'll first go up to the top here and I can see that gray do you see the gray that's right here going along and here's the corner of it I'll come out once again I'm going to come over here and use my stitch lasso tool and be very careful when I select this part of the design I'm going to go slowly and come in and I'd rather err on the portion of the design I don't want rather than the part that I do it takes a moment to select I'll hit my delete and I see that I'm left with just this portion here and I can delete those points individually and get rid of that and you can see that it was really a triple stitch so that portion is taken care of let me scoot down a little bit and I know that I am not going to use this whole area of the design so I'm going to drop us back just a little bit maybe the 200 will work if I can get all portion of that design in one screen so again I'm going to take my stitch lasso tool and come in and delete the portion that I don't want selected and deleted okay I do have a portion of this gray and purple but I'll come back to that what I'm doing is taking care of the big portions that I know that aren't going to be a part of my design and again my stitch lasso tool select that and watching where my gray is I'm going to go across the gray and down to select that area and again if you're more comfortable you could do two portions of it at a time I'll get my tool again go in and you can see that gray area I'm going to go down select that portion looking pretty good here coming up I see that gray portion of my hidden shape once again my stitch lasso tool and I'm going to try and stay within that gray area knowing full well that I can come back and take care of any stragglers that I have and again this gray area here once again my tool and I'm going to try and stay within that gray area you get better at this you get a little more stable as you play and I'll delete that and that looks pretty good so at this point I would want to really zoom in I see some area up here I need to take care of get my tool come in here in the gray delete that 
and I want to get a little closer to this area right in here. You notice that when I was deleting, I deleted the things that were under the gray. This is my satin stitch for my pendant, and I know that those won't show because that satin stitch is the last thing to stitch. But I do want to take care of a little bit more of this area. I can see that it's very close to the gray. So again, I'll get that lasso tool, come in, and stay within the gray, sort of in the middle of that gray, and then select those and delete. Remember, if you need to take care of one point at a time, you can select that point and delete stitch by stitch. Like that, I could use the delete on my keyboard. Now I'm going to scroll down around in the gray area. These are very close to the edge, so I might want to lasso those away as well. Should have grabbed that bottom point here maybe just a little bit. You can also click on that point and drag it over. If you don't want to delete it, if you don't want to create any kind of tie off, you simply can grab one of those points and move it over. That looks pretty good, although this is kind of close. So again, get my lasso tool and select that right through the middle, drag that around and delete. And I'm just going to check the perimeter. If I have a situation like this where my stitches are going to end too soon, I can take that stitch and drag it down just a little bit and shape it. Remember that that's going to be covered in that satin stitch. I love this ability to fade. If I need to do the reverse of that, I simply just take that point and move it up a bit. So here, not only are we using our outline and lasso tools, we're using our stitches tool as well. That all looks real good because it's within my gray shade and I'm checking this area here. Now we'll go back up top, looking all of those points look good within all covered in that satin. Let me see what these long stitches are doing. Again, that's okay because they're all under the satin stitch and checking in my corner. Again, that looks pretty good. I could even bring that up under that corner and this looks nice as well going across the top. So at this point, I'm happy. I'll go ahead and zoom out. Let's come back into our sequence view and unhide that purple logically I would also want to send that to stitch out last because you see right now it's going to stitch out before my Mindy design so we come up here and I want to move that to front and that satin stitch you see how it does indeed cover all of those additional stitches so that was a little bit more challenging but the idea is yes you can with your lasso tool you can manipulate your own designs or designs that you own use for your own purpose if we take a look now to see that design again this was the original design here's the name of it creations by Kara is the website that I went to and then this is my finished pendant you can see that I indeed made that in the shape and I just have a portion of that design because I used my lasso tools. So you see what seems like a daunting task is really doable if you take it in steps. I've made this chart for you to compare the differences between your select lasso and your stitch lasso. You can see where they're located on your toolbar and what they do. Remember that the select lasso, the parts have to be completely encased within your lassoed area for you to remove them. Whereas if you use your stitch lasso, you can click and drag and all of the points that are within that lassoed area will be deleted. You have your shape tool that offers you the points that are allowed then to be edited and you have your stitch tool which shows for you all of the stitch points recommended that you have your stitch ends tool on so you can see them and it's a very easy way for you to delete specific points. I'm a firm believer that once you understand how a tool works you can then use it to do many different things and that was my goal for this video to help you understand the outline tool and the differences between select lasso and stitch lasso also when to use that shape tool and when to use the stitch ends tool. As a plus, you also have some new projects that you can complete. The personalized keychain using the symbols as charmers, the jacket jewelry covered buttons, standalone patches. 
Surround yourself with outlines, lassos, and all things Perfect Embroidery Pro. Thanks for joining me. Enjoy.